Fortnite has seen more week-to-week -week changes than any other game in recent history. And with so much change comes a variety of strategies, metas, and playstyles. Many of these different playstyles come from our fellow streamers and friends, like your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. What's up guys, my name is Kristoff, and today we'll be going over how Fortnite strategies have evolved over the seasons. Of course, there's quite a lot of changes to talk about which can't all fit in this video, so we've condensed it down to the most impactful changes and how they've altered player strategy throughout the game. But before we get into it, if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite, then click the link below to go to ProGuides.com, where you can play with the best players in the world by just clicking a button on the right of your screen. Sign up for our membership at ProGuides and you'll get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongrel. So if you guys want to compete in Fortnite, you have to check out ProGuides.com. All right, with that being said, let's get into the video. So let's take a stroll down memory lane, starting off with the release of the game and the first season. So pretty much everybody in this season was a noob. Hardly anyone understood the building mechanics, so it was basically all up to your aim. Many players that came from CSGO, like Liquid Poach, or H1Z1, like Ninja, had a huge advantage. By the first couple of months, Ninja had gained millions of subscribers because the skill gap was so real. I mean, take a look at even Tfue here. The best players managed to use building to their advantage in fights, but only with simple walls, ramps, and maybe an edit or two every now and then. Since no one really knew how to utilize building, most players relied heavily on natural cover to stay alive. They would camp inside houses or other structures, bushes, and even on top of trees. Now, I wasn't one of the guys who camped in trees, but I definitely used natural cover to stay alive. Even if you look at the meta today, bush camping is kind of a meme right now, but back then, they were a noob's best friend. Back in Season 1, players also had to depend on skills and strategies they already knew from previous Battle Royale games like PUBG or H1Z1. Things like knowing how to avoid the storm, the value of high ground, and going for supply drops to acquire high tier weapons. I'm sure most of us deep down loved this season and we miss it dearly because it was so easy to pub stomp. But that was it for Season 1, and now let's get on to Season 2. Season 2 was something much greater than the previous season. In Season 1, players were still getting used to the game, but throughout the next season, players really started to understand the importance of building. However, most of the structures they could build were actually pretty basic. To give you an idea of how simple they were, Myth was considered by most pros to be the best builder in the world during this time. The moves he pulled off and the build battles he got into shocked viewers back then. It was insane. But if you actually look back at Myth's building in retrospect, it looks kind of rudimentary and pretty slow. Without turbo building, there was a hard limit to how quickly one could build, and Myth was able to master this perfectly. Now, in Season 2, there was one strategy that really started to rise in popularity, and that strategy was the double pump loadout. Comment down in chat if you guys remember and loved the double pump meta. With no weapon swap delay after firing, you could fire a pump, swap to your second, and then fire that, swap back, and rinse and repeat. It was a lethal combo. Most players hated it, and only a select few could abuse it. Having two shotguns in your inventory easily became the best option for loadouts. Keep in mind that pump shotguns had better range and damage capabilities than they do now, so running into somebody using this was like running into Arnold Schwarzenegger with three combat shotguns on steroids. So Season 2 was Myth's season, and it was the beginning of the double pump meta. But what was brought about in Season 3? With the start of Season 3, the introduction of a single setting completely changed the way Fortnite was played. And that setting was, can you guess it? Turbo building. Now, players could just hold down their build button to play structures in quick succession. This is when we saw the era and the rise of Mongrel and other young talent around the world. This was the start of a new era. This simple addition we take for granted today gave rise in Season 3 to the build battling meta. We started to see more complex structures being built like fortified ramps, turtling, and one by ones just because players could actually build them quickly enough. This shifted the style of building and strategy in Fortnite completely. Another incredible thing that happened was that the double shotgun meta continued into Season 3 and completely blew up in popularity. Pretty much everybody was using it at this point. The heavy shotgun was also added about halfway through, but really wasn't used in the double shotgun setup right away. 
Epic did make some nerfs to the swapping speed of shotguns, but their futile attempts were just not enough to kill it. This led to widespread complaints and hate against the overpowered double shotgun meta, and Season 3 was just when Fortnite started to explode. People were absolutely obsessed with Season 3. But what about Season 4? Near the start of Season 4, turbo building got buffed to be three times faster. With this change, so many new building techniques emerged and we began to see the use of 90s waterfalling and double floor wall ramps just to name a few of those mind-boggling techniques. If you guys are interested in mastering those techniques, then click the link below. We have a ton of great resources to help you out, only at ProGuides.com. So most players in Season 4 weren't that good at these techniques yet, but they were now possible with the additions to the building techniques. This is where the building skill gap began to widen immensely. Players who were used to pure shooter games were forced to adapt to the meta or just lose all their games. Season 4 also saw the nerf to the pump shotgun, and although the double shotgun still remained, it was in a different form. Double heavies eventually became the preferred combo for the latter half of the season. Also, something else that took the community by storm is that the damage trap was nerfed to 75 damage. So, a lot of people didn't even use them in combat. But within a couple of patches, Epic did do a complete 180 and buff traps to be so much stronger than they were even originally intended to be. Now, many players could use them in build fights and in insanely clever ways to get kills that were just not possible before. Then, ghost peeking became a norm. This was a strategy that abused the crouch animation to get shots off from behind cover without revealing your character. Tfue was one of the first ones spotted using it. Even though the way peeking behaved wasn't new or anything, once first shot accuracy was added, players could abuse the heck out of it. Around Season 4, pretty much every scrim player, streamer, and pro were using this exploit before it ultimately got patched out. In addition to that, there was a brief three-week period during the season that saw a complete shift in building strategy, mainly because you didn't need to build for height anymore and all because of the, oh, you remember this, the jetpack. This short-lived item allowed players to fly around for small periods of time, having to land and recharge. In fact, if you guys played Fortnite during the jetpack meta, then just comment jetpack down below. I want to see how many of you guys actually played back then. The jetpack made fall damage become a complete non-factor and even revived the sky-based strategy. Sky-based shenanigans were used a lot in the first couple of seasons but eventually became too risky as players caught on. Once Epic Games vaulted the jetpack, sky-based died off again and players had to go back to relying on their building abilities. So that was Season 4. What about Season 5? Cue the sad music. At the start of Season 5, the double shotgun meta was finally killed. You could either be crying at this point, or you could be extremely happy depending on how good you were at using double shotguns. Epic ended up adding a delay which made it pointless to have more than one shotgun in your inventory. Since double shotguns were removed, SMGs actually became the most viable close range option. This started what many referred to as the spray meta. The strategy was to, well, spray the crap out of your SMG. The entire goal and shift was to spray as much as possible. It was very difficult to stay alive even when you were building. Everyone was just spraying down these one by ones and it was just a complete mess. Two new weapons, the drum gun as well as the new compact SMG just did so much damage. You could barely do anything to protect yourself. It was so valuable to have an SMG that some players often carried two in their inventory. Eventually, the compact SMG would get nerfed, so everyone started using the drum gun instead. Unfortunately, that ended up being a problem too, and just reinforced the shoot until your opponent is dead strategy. Season 5 also saw the introduction of the Heavy Sniper. This made a bunch of CSGO players like myself extremely happy. I was wondering when they were going to throw the op in Fortnite. With this ability to one-shot structures, team-based modes now had the double sniper strategy as a viable option to kill unattentive players sitting inside their box. The usage didn't catch on right away, but eventually every duo and squad started using this strategy. As for how building strategies had changed and evolved, Season 5 saw a dramatic increase in the level of skill. Playground just got released right before the season began, and so finally players had a game mode where they could practice freely in. Now all they had to do was test any technique or build battle with their friends, which just wasn't possible before. The addition of this practice mode skyrocketed the average skill level. 
players started to realize the importance of cones, editing during combat, 90s, and plenty of other techniques. That's right, editing, something that seems so fundamental today, honestly wasn't used a whole lot before Season 5. And this practice mode was so significant in increasing the average skill level that it helped don a new meta ending in Season 5, the editing meta. Season 6. A few additions and changes in Patch 6.20 were so significant that they changed the landscape of the game forever. The first change was adding zombies as a part of the Fortnite Mares event. I'm sure we all know the strategy behind these guys today, and back then, it was sort of the same. You could endlessly farm them for free shields and plenty of loot. They were more spread out around the map, but the strategy was more or less the same. The second change was that the hand cannon got buffed. It went from being next to useless to almost becoming the best weapon in the game. The buff made the gun able to one-shot every newly placed structure. Whether it was wood, brick, or steel, if you could catch your opponent placing a structure, you could instantly delete it. All fully built wood structures also got one shot as well. This hand cannon was an absolute beast. What was traditionally a medium to long range weapon ended up being a huge part of build battling for the rest of the season. The third and very significant change to this season was the addition of Glider Redeploy. It wasn't the item we all recognize today, it was introduced as an ability every player spawned with. They didn't need to find it or take up an item slot with it, you could just jump off your builds whenever you wanted and you would fly safely to the ground. The gliding speed was a lot faster than it is today as well. Some players liked it for certain aspects like easier rotations, while others hated it for promoting aggression and removing fall damage as a skill factor. This ended up being massively controversial within the community, so Epic eventually removed it after only 20 days. Now, Season 7. That was when metas and strategies really started to change up. Along with the new snowy map, we saw the X4 Stormwing plane added to the game. This wasn't the first vehicle introduced to the game, but it was the first vehicle to play a major role in combat and how games ended up playing out. These planes spawned all over the place. With the ability to destroy structures and crash into enemies, these things were essentially flying wrecking balls. It was absolute chaos. They also had a turret mounted to the front that the pilot could shoot, as if a flying wrecking ball doesn't sound powerful enough. It's safe to say that when planes were first implemented, they were absolutely broken. So much so that players prioritized landing on them just so that they could secure one at the start. They saw heavy use in competitive matches as well. Just take a look here. Is Aiden just killing everyone he sees, dude? Saw him in the sky. He got they're not started. fighting. They're f***ing around, you idiots. Yeah, saw him or previous, uh, <laughs> they're literally they're shooting much. around each other on purpose. The ability to stay in the sky during late game circles made it insanely easy to rack up placement points, so much so that players would make truces with enemy planes for mutual benefit. Eventually, planes did get nerfed to be less impactful against players, but never to a point where they weren't viable. Throughout their lifespan, planes were always useful and saw play across every game mode. As for the most important change in Season 7, and one that ushered in a new meta and a completely new, aggressive playstyle, was the addition of Siphon. Siphon was significant enough that it changed how players were approaching fights in entirety. It was added across all modes to start, since it gave 50 health and extra materials after each kill, the aggressive playstyle became much more enticing. Everyone was trying to go for kills, it was just madness. Siphon would last until Season 8, where regular modes reverted to not having Siphon anymore. In Season 8, we saw the plane get vaulted. But to the dismay of many, it was replaced by none other than the baller. Oh my god. Let's go! Wait. No! <laughs> Dude, are you kidding me? This thing was nowhere near as powerful, but it still didn't stop people from disliking it for its high level of effectiveness in competitive matches. Some competitors would literally just sit in a baller on a mountain range for the entirety of the match. Just like the plane, players would land on ballers at the start so they wouldn't get scooped up. You would then go on to gather loot, hoping to bring your baller along into the late game, and if you could, you would use these things just to rotate for free. With how risky it could be for going shots in the end game, there was almost no incentive to contest ballers at the end of a match. Even if you did destroy one, the players would just hop out without a scratch on them. So they ended up pretty much being free rotation machines. Another major shift in the meta happened in Season 8, and that was the box fighting meta. 
The box fighting meta became much more prevalent around this time. Box fighting was definitely around before Season 8, but this was when it really started to take off. Players started realizing the disadvantages of build battles and started preferring box fights instead. Less third-party potential, fewer materials used, and better outplay opportunities are all reasons box fighting continues to overshadow build battles to this day. Also factor in that editing became far more effective at this time. Every Fortnite player and their grandma can do a great edit now. And so why do a build battle when you can just box fight? Well, you can't forget the single balloon strategy. Using the balloon, single balloon strategy to try and get as much height in the late game. Single For balloon today, strategy? It's a back bling, bro! There's no strategy! That was it for Season 8, but what about Season 9? Well, there wasn't too many changes in Season 9. The baller remained, the vehicle meta continued for another season, but after several nerfs, their usefulness did drop a bit. So some teams opted to play without them. But for solo matches and going into the World Cup, vehicles did see a large amount of use. Arguably the biggest change to playstyle in Season 9 though, was the vaulting of the pump shotgun, and the addition of the combat shotgun. Did, someone just said in the chat there is no skill gap. I did tell my wife that the pump shotgun was probably the last gun in the game that allowed good players to be able to kill another good player or a bad player up close when they're down in a battle. Now all that's left is... No scoping people in the face with a sniper rifle. Before this change, shotguns were only really useful at close ranges, but the combat, well, I'm sure most of you guys remember, suffice to say, this thing was the only weapon that you needed. SMGs were rendered useless because why not just use the combat instead? It did more damage and was a lot easier to use. And when put up with every other shotgun out there, it won 9 out of 10 fights. Eventually, during the same season, the pump was unvaulted after much of a community backlash and made its way back into the game. Now, players have more of a choice when it comes to close-range weaponry. Which brings us to where we are today. Season X. Or 10, however you want to say it. First things first, mechs absolutely dominated Fortnite gameplay for the first few weeks of Season X. It wasn't until multiple nerfs and spawn rate reductions that they became less of a factor in competitive play. With ballers now gone and fewer mobility options available, encountering one of these bad boys in anything other than solos would pretty much guarantee death. Players would, again, land on them at the start of the match. Their ability to farm up materials in no time made them useful in the early game even if you weren't necessarily getting into fights. The arrival of Rift Zones means that players can now choose to play a certain way if they want to. Like if you don't want to build, then go to Tilted Town. If you prefer PvE fighting and tons of free loot, Retail Row is your jam. Even something like Prop Hunt being added to Moisty Palms area gives a whole new level of strategy you can work with. Love them or hate them, Rift Zones definitely changed how we played the game. Fortnite's early stages were so simple and there was something really charming about it. We started with bush camping and no one really knew how to build. But as players got better and the tools were given to them, massive build battles became a common occurrence. Vehicles eventually played a huge role in later seasons, creating metas that defined game plans all the way to the pro level. Okay, so what was your favorite season? Let us know down in the comments below, we really want to see. And if you guys are interested in getting better at Fortnite this season, then make sure you check out ProGuides.com and start playing with a pro right now. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck in your next few games.